Let's look at the sanguine. The sanguine temperament is traditionally associated with air and the season of spring. And Pastor Chief Ape, I know you don't know spring. Spring is the, is the season between winter and summer. In Ghana, we only have rainy season and dry season. Where I am, we have four seasons. People with this temperament tend to be lively, sociable, carefree. They don't care about anything. They are talkatives. They are pleasure-seeking and fun-loving people. They may be warm-hearted and optimistic. They can make new friends easily, be imaginative and artistic, and often have many ideas. They let go of things easily and like change and diversity. The sanguine person can be very caring, but they may struggle with following tax all the way through, and they are chronically late and forgetful. I will come to their negatives and um, the, the, their disadvantages and their advantages or their strengths and their negatives. They're choleric. The choleric temperament is traditionally associated with fire and the season of summer. Fire, they can be hot, hot tempered, quick tempered. People with this temperament tend to be egocentric. They have a lot of ego and extroverts. They may be excitable, impulsive, restless, with reserves of aggression, energy, passion, and they try to instill these things in others. They force it on others. They tend to be tax and action-oriented people and are focused on getting a job done efficiently. Their motto is, let's do it now. If there's anything to be done, do it now. They can be ambitious, strong-willed, and like to be in charge. They can show leadership, are good at planning, and are often practical and solution-oriented. They appreciate receiving respect. And if there's a woman listening to me whose husband is a choleric, my darling, you can't play and joke around with the respect of a choleric. The melancholy. The melancholy temperament is traditionally associated with the elements of earth and the season of autumn. And from where I am, the season of fall. Fall and autumn is the same thing. The British people say autumn and the Americans say fall. Um, is the period where all the leaves um, starts falling before winter. Pastor Chief Ape, don't worry, I'll bring you here to see it. The period between summer and winter, yes. People with this temperament may appear serious, introverted, cautious, or even suspicious. They can be very compassionate and great humanitarians if they do not get stuck in self-pity. They are prone to depression and moodiness. They often prefer to do things themselves 
both to meet their own standards and because they are inheritant, because they do not want people to help them. Phlegmatics. The phlegmatic temperament is traditionally associated with water and the season of winter. People with this temperament may be inward and private, thoughtful, reasonable, calm, patient, caring, and tolerant. They tend to have a rich inner life, seek a quiet, peaceful atmosphere, and be content with themselves. They tend to be steadfast, consistent in their habits, and thus steady and faithful friends. They usually are even-tempered. I didn't say quick-tempered. It's the cholerics that are quick-tempered. The flex are even-tempered. All day they can be very stubborn if pushed. Now let's look at their strengths and their negatives. The weaknesses of the sanguine. They are indisciplined with money. They love to shop and can overspend. When you are married to a sanguine, if you are not careful, there will be no money to even pay school fees. And I pray that two sanguines don't get married. They are untidy. They throw things about and are disorganized. They can enter and leave relationships easily and not feel anything. They are forgetful and they talk too much. They are strengths. They are good with networking. They love to have fun and be the, the, the center of any party. And because they love to network, they can be very good pastor's wives. As a woman, they, the women love to dress and have new hairstyles. The sanguines are very good with colors. They are friendly and warm. They are always happy. But as Christians, they can be carnal and worldly. I hope somebody's listening to me. Please, I'm not talking to my daughter, Nadromo. The cholerics, their achievements, or their strengths, they are achievers and successful. The men provide for their homes. The men provide for their wives and their children. They are givers. They, like, they never like to see their wives and their children ever in need. They provide to the very last letter. They are good with taking decisions and taking decisions for others. If you are married to a choleric, if you are not careful, you will never take your own decision. They are always quick to take their, their decisions and take yours, even when you can take your own decisions. You should see me travel with my husband. Oh, my God. Even my passport, he keeps it. Meanwhile, when I'm traveling alone, I carry my own passport. They take charge everywhere they go, and they like to get things done. They are weaknesses. The men are not moved by the tears and emotions of their wives. If he's a man, his wife and children are usually afraid of them. 
they are the kind of fathers when they go out and they are coming back, their children are running to pretend they are sleeping. They are quick-tempered and unforgiven. The mothers, in other words, the women who are cholerics, the mothers, are very unpopular with the children because they are disciplinarians. The women are bossy, very bossy everywhere they go. At home, they are bossy. At work, they are bossy. To the melancholy, they are weaknesses. They are sensitive and emotional. They find it difficult to forgive. They keep everything, whatever you did to them. Since the formation of America, or since the birth of Kwame Nkrumah, they will keep it, and they can always refer to it. They keep a lot within them because they hardly forget. They lack confidence. They are constantly arranging things at home and are constantly nagging and complaining about things. And they hate it when they tidy up and people mess up. They are strengths. They are neat, tidy, and organized. They are careful decision makers. It takes them a while to take decisions. So when they make the, they take their decisions, trust me, they hardly go wrong. They are meticulous. They are good listeners. They are not too generous. Now the phlegmatic. The phlegmatic, they are strengths. They are loyal, faithful, and dependable. The phlegmatic is a natural peacemaker. They hardly yell or argue. They are good listeners. They are attentive, and they are patient people. They are weaknesses. They are not easy to motivate. They lack ambition. They procrastinate. They lie tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, let's do it tomorrow. By the time you realize five years have come, they are courting with you. Next year, or they are in a relationship with you. Next year, I'll do official uh, proposal. Second year, official proposal. Third year, if you are not careful, you'll be 10, 11 years with them. Or they hang around you for a long time before they propose. If you are around a phlegmatic, make sure he's really interested in you. Otherwise, by the time you are realized, 15 years have gone and they haven't said anything. They leave decision making to their spouse, that is the husbands. They are slow and lazy and very laid back. They never communicate the truth about their feelings. They are disorganized at home. They are normally unconcerned about their dressing, especially the women. And they hardly discipline the children. So if you are of another temperament and you are married to a phlegmatic, it's very, very important that you take the discipline of the children. On this note, we will go on a short commercial break and I would introduce my special guest to you. <laughs> The community I grew up in 
impacted stubborn fearlessness in me. I grew up as an outspoken child and was often regarded as loud, naughty, arrogant, and rowdy. I was misunderstood and considered very difficult to deal with because I always stated my stance, objected to opposing views, and strongly defended what I believed in. This is my story. It's an autobiographical account of the life of Reverend Mrs. Rachel Crunchy Ankara. It takes us through an intimate journey of her life in a small fishing community Accra, Ghana, to the global stage of ministry where lives are transformed through the redemptive grace of God operating through His handmaiden. Get your copies now and be inspired. Order online on iBookstore, Amazon, and Barnes and Noble, RoyalHouseChapel.org or visit any major bookstore near you. For further inquiry, contact the Royal House Chapel Office at Obecha B. Lamte Interchange, Accra, or call Today is Reverend and Pastor Mrs. Thomas Brew. Pastor and Pastor Mrs. or Reverend and Pastor Mrs. Thomas Brew are the senior pastors of our Victory Center in Connecticut, Royal House Chapel. So, in the studio today is our Victory Church. Oh, I love the studio. My mama and Reverend Thomas, you are welcome. Hey, please, don't force me to transfer. The tea alone, I'm loving it. Please, take a nice sip. Nice winter tea. Mommy, take a sip. Oh, <laughs> nice winter tea. Please, Pastor Chief Ape, joy daddy. I'm tired of the water. Please, serve me some tea when I come. You see, I was fast. Within less than 20 minutes, I was done with my first part. In Ghana, I keep long with my first part because my throat is always dry. Hmm. America is sweet. Please, you are welcome. Thank you so much, Thank Mommy. I love your his and hers. I love it. And we are all wearing red. It's, it's, it's strange. It's so strange. Yes, I didn't plan to wear the same thing with you. I love this. I love this. I hope my, my couples in Ghana are watching. Please, when you come, come with, in his and hers. Let me know that you are properly married and you are enjoying your marriage and that you are not lying to us. Anyway, you are welcome once more. Thank you so much. In the past few weeks i've been handling temperaments number one i want to find out do you know your temperaments and how have you been able to cope with each other's temperaments last week i handled temperaments and our children today i'm handling temperaments and your spouse how have you been able to cope with each other and with each other's temperaments do you want to go first or i should go you <laughs> all right so mommy first of all we want to say it is a great honor for you to be in victory center this week it is truly a blessing we and i hope you know that um reverend and pastor mrs thomas brew are not new to our screen this is actually your second time on family Life. that's right so you are having a second time because the first time you did so well thank you so, so well. much mm. So Thank please you so go much. ahead. So we, we, we are very honored uh, to have you here in Connecticut. It is truly a blessing. Um, and especially to even be filming, you know, the Family Life series right here from Victory Center. God bless you for touching lives, for being a blessing to people. Uh, you continue to inspire us. And we are grateful to have you here. 
Um, Before so, you answer the question, I want you to tell people where Victory Center is. You'd be surprised that somebody in Connecticut and does not know where Royal House Chapel is and where Victory Center is, and they would want to be part of your church. Amen. You are doing so well, so, so well. Thank you. So well. All the meetings we've had, powerful meetings with Apostle General, and the room packed, packed full, packed full. So let somebody in Connecticut or anybody coming from America, hey, from Ghana, who would arrive in Connecticut, know where the church is. So, so if you are watching us and you, are, you happen to be in Connecticut or anywhere close by, um, our church is currently meeting in South Windsor um, and will soon be moving to East Hartford. Uh, but it's all, you know, in the same area. Um, the, the new location is just about 10 to 12 minutes from where we are now. Um, so it's not too far from here. But if you are watching and you are anywhere in the Hartford, you know, area, Please come and pay us a visit. I guarantee that you'll be glad that you came. I can't wait to have family life in your new location. Amen. I can't wait. Amen. Um, for those of you who are listening to me across the world, Reverend Thomas and Mama Ama have bought a new property for the Lord. Massive, beautiful, and I can't wait to go and see it myself. My darling, my next, my next one in Connecticut is certainly going to be in their new premises. Yeah. Mm. Amen and amen. So, Mommy, your, 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 your question was, uh, do we know our temperaments and how do we cope with each other's temperaments? So, um, I am a phlegmatic. Okay. I am, Gosh. I think, 150% phlegmatic. Wow. I, t I tell my wife, I don't think I have any other <laughs> temperament in me. <laughs> you know, I, I, I am the poster boy and the advertisement for... Uh, phlegmatic husbands. Mm. Um, That's so, why you're a very good pastor. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Please tell my people for me. <laughs> <laughs> Phlegmatics are ve very, very tolerant pastors. Um, they are easy to handle pastors. They are never angry. Um, they are very loyal, loyal to their mother church, loyal to their members. I mean, most, most, Senior pastors will tell you they love it when they get flags for associate pastors. God bless you. you know, so so I'm a, I'm a phlegmatic, and, um, and I know that for many reasons. You know, I think um, number one is that I'm very laid back, okay. almost too laid back. Um, I'm sure my wife Please will... Please confess your <laughs> sins. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure my wife will agree 100% with that, but I, I, I'm... You know, I, I, I try not to be very laid back, but I just am, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm not moved by much, okay. you know. So, you know, I remember years ago when I was in college, somebody, you know, made a joke and said, you know, a house can be on fire and Reverend Thomas will be the only person just calmly walking out. Wow. Even though the house is on fire. Wow. But that is me. I, I, I wish I wasn't that way, but wow. I'm That's just very wow. laid back. Um, you know, as a person, I'm also, like you said, extremely tolerant, mm. you know, maybe even to a fault. Mm. So I think what ends up happening is, you know, there are times when I can see maybe something going crooked or something going wrong, but I'll wait and wait and wait and wait, you know, and my, my dear wife, you know, let's move, do let's something, move. you know, and, 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 and I just take my time, you know, with everything, wow. you know, so... You know, it's just who I am. I'm, I'm extremely. You so, know. Pastor Pa, you are not the only one. Oh my God! All my guys in the studio, Powerline TV, are all flex. Wow. Almost wow. ninety-nine percent of them are all flex. Sometimes, when you need them to push, they are so relaxed. And you see, flex, the world flex is not are the coming best. to an end. Why are you worried, my mama? How have you been able to deal with Reverend Thomas? And then I ask Reverend Thomas how he has been able to deal with you. I won't tell them what your temperament is. You must say it yourself, and then we'll find out how Reverend Thomas has been able to deal with you. 
Thank you, Mommy, for inviting us again to your show. Um, we are very honored to be here. So it was a twofold question. You said to tell or share what my temperament is. When you, t when you talked to me um, two nights ago about being on the show, I said to myself, oh my goodness, this is one area I do not want to deal with, you know. But you are very good at it, though. Because <laughs> he keeps saying I'm so good at it, but the reason why is it's easier to share the theoretical part of it, but when it comes to myself, because of the journey that I have traveled, I get a bit confused. Why am I saying that? Be before I got married, I thought I was a melancholy okay. because I'm a, I'm a last born in my family and I got to enjoy that last born position and feel, felt very free to be organized in my own way and to get things in order in my own way. I didn't have so much um, to worry about in terms of taking the leadership role because I have an older sister and I have older siblings who are always like, they are very strong cholerics who would always make decisions and I just enjoyed life like that until I went to school and I believe that in Ghana or in, the, in society, when you are melancholy, sometimes um, people mistake you to be a choleric because you are very organized, you like for things to get done in an, in an organized fashion, you get things done, you get things done in a meticulous way, you are dependable and, and, and people like that when they are organizing projects or they, they want to start up uh, an organization or anything like that. So they will naturally think you're a leader. So I, and I was appointed the class prefect, the school prefect. The and I'm sure you're intelligent. In Ghana, once you're intelligent. Once you're intelligent, you're always prefects. Every class you are, were you school prefects? Yeah. Wow. Yes. I was a school prefect in, in my primary school. And when I got to, I went to St. Rose's okay. secondary school, I was the compound prefect. Wow. St. Rose's, as you all know, we are 25 years celebrating 25 wow. years. A shout out to all my Rose seconds. 25 um, years. 25 Just years. Just 25 years. <laughs> since I left school. <laughs> oh, since you left school. Yes, okay. since I left school. Um, but when I was there, the reason why I'm talking about St. Rose is mm. at the time, we were awarded the neatest school in Ghana. It came on the newspapers a few times. And I was the school prefect, I mean, the compound prefect. Wow. So you can imagine the neatest girl. I was the office girl. Wow. I mean, think I was, now that I look back, I'm thinking what made them choose or select mm, me. Mm. I guess those are the traits mm, they were seeing mm, in me. Mm, so mm. it's the melancholic trait mm, that mm, made them mm, choose me mm. in those, for those positions. Mm. So then the walk now to being married to a, a phlegmatic. Yeah. Decisions had to be made. Mm. Then my notion of uh, being married was, okay, my husband will take the lead, make the decisions, all that. That wasn't happening. Mm. So in the beginning, mm. it was a struggle. So even we thought I was a choleric. Okay. Then, and I still think there's some 10% in there somewhere. But. <laughs> you tend to see it that way because when we read the choleric temperament, the cholerics like to make decisions. And obviously we, ma we, we manage a church, now we manage children, we manage a household. So against my wishes, um, I tend to take it by the bull's horn and make decisions sometimes. Sometimes reluctantly and frustrating, in, in a very, very frustrating way, I have to make the decisions because then my melancholy nature set, sets in because I, melancholies also don't want things to go way, way wire, haywire. So what happens is that I step in and fill in the gap. So that's, that has been the journey. So when you ask me about my temperament, I, I, I get confused. So now I, I don't know. I, I, we kept going back and forth. Am I a melancholy? Am I a choleric? Because sometimes I tend Melclo, to do... Melclo. You are, you are a melancholic 90% of the 
And some ten percent choleric is in there somewhere. Mommy, you, I'll have to come to you for a special discussion. For, because, for a special discussion. Because I think I see sanguine in me as well. Because I'm having to compensate and make when up you were, a lot. When you were growing up, were you introverted or extroverted? Extrovert. Wow. Extrovert. Wow. Extrovert. Wow. Yeah. So they, then, I remember when my, when I was um, a little girl, like my my daughter, mm. my mom. They all used to say. I'm a pekasa or pekasa, but I remember when I was in high school, you were I quiet. was quiet. Um, I tend to be quiet. I, I, I got quiet for some time. Okay. And then when I got married to him, then again, it flipped again because when people come to our house, I have to automatically be <laughs> the, the hospitable person because Reverend Thomas, when he descends from stage, he's a complete 150 flag and people feel like, have I done something to Rev? Did I do that? You could be in with Reverend Thomas for two days and he doesn't mind not saying anything. Wow. And I felt like it, it, it's not, it, it doesn't make people feel warm when they come to the home. Mm. So then mm. again, I had to fill in. And in filling in, I started seeing myself, am I a sanguine? Because then I realized I am the one doing all the talking. Yeah. So now my trait... You are Mel, Mel Closer. So I think you are, I, I agree very well with your husband, with Reverend Thomas. I think you are a Mel Clue. You are, your primary temperament is melancholy, and then the secondary one is choleric. Mm. So... Reverend Thomas, how are you able to deal? Because I haven't gone into the combinations. I don't want us to go into the combinations. Right. But how are you able to deal with a melancholic wife? You know, so I think num number one for mm. me is that I have to be accepting of what my weaknesses are okay. and how her strengths challenge and inspire me to be better. Okay. So, for example, she likes to plan. Okay. Today is Wednesday. We want to do something on Saturday. Mm. So she wants to know today that on Saturday we are going to wake up at this time. Okay. The thing's going to happen. And me too, my... It's just not in me. Yeah. So I tend to make plans on the day that the thing should be happening. Okay. So when I wake up in the morning, okay, today let's do this, today let's do this, today. She doesn't like that at all. Oh, no. Because from her standpoint, before you go to bed the night before. You should have planned. You should know what is happening the next day. And so one of the areas where I'm trying to be better as a husband is by becoming a better planner. So, you know, in terms of how I cope with her temperament is that I am accepting of the areas where I have to do better. Okay. Another example would be um, in finances. Okay. You know, she is very, you know, she's a saver. She is very particular about how she spends money and... And, and we must save, and, we, and, and, and I tell her all the time. <laughs> the typical melancholy. I, I, I tell her all the time. It's not that I don't like saving. I just sometimes like to spend a little bit. Um, Mommy, it's not a little bit. <laughs> you know, w once in a while, I want to, you know, so I used to, I used to, like, you know, so if there's a new phone, I want it. If there's a new gadget, I want it. Wow. If there's a new something, I want to have it. But mommy, these days, my, the phone I'm using now is like four years old. Okay. Okay. You know, so I'm trying. That's right. <laughs> it's all I'm trying to say. You know, <laughs> I, I'm using iPhone, I think 11 or something. Now there's 14. So, you know, I, I'm not spending as much as I used to. I've, I've gotten better. But, and, and it's because of, again, her... <laughs> you know, um, helping me in that wow. area. So I think the acceptance for me of where I need to be better makes a, a big difference. When, when we are giving offerings in church, for example, she likes to, so she's very detailed. Okay. So every seed we sow, mm -hmm. we must keep a journal and a okay. record of the okay. seed. So we sow this seed on this day, and this was a prayer that was attached to the seed. Wow. So that when, so that when God answers the prayer, wow. we can go back and refer that it was that day and that prayer 
and that se seed that brought the result. So what me, would you me too, when, I, when I'm giving, I'm just giving. Wow. I'm not thinking about anything like that. So wow. these are some of the things. Your primary um, temperament is certainly melancholy. I mean, very, very typical of you. Next week, we'll be handling how you deal with each other's temperament. We will go into that next week. But before next week, we will go straight away into Ask Mama Rita. Mama, Mama, I would ask you how you deal with... with I know. I know. <laughs> Somebody says, Good day, mommy. God richly bless you for the teaching of temperament. For the first time, I see my second child getting excited with homeworks because I now have patience for her. Oh my God, God bless you for being patient with your child. Then another person says, good evening, Mama Rita. Please, I'm a melancholy. But unfortunately, I grew up in an unorganized environment. And I believe that I believe that has really affected a lot about me and how organized I desire to be. Please, how can I resolve this and improve? Did you get the question? Yes. I don't know whether it's a he or she claims she's a melancholy. Unfortunately, grew up in an unorganized environment and believes that because of the environment in which she grew up is affected her. She is not as organized as her temperament should be. Mm. And now she wants to find out how she can, you know, resolve and improve on her, you know, environment. environment. And being organized. Is this person single still? Um, they didn't say it. The question they, doesn't say. The person doesn't say it. I, I think it's a bit broad because we don't know where the, which stage mm. the person is in mm. now. Because if you are single, mm. it's a bit easier mm. to, to um, go back and redo mm. or unlearn certain mm. things. But when you are married, mm. like I was saying, mm. when, 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 you, when you, are, you are born with the temperament... Yeah your family that you're raised mm. in shapes that temperament in a way. Mm. And then life, what, what, your journey in life also shapes that mm. temperament. Because at this point, you would agree that I'm a melancholy. If you come to my house, mm. it is so messed up. You will never think I'm a melancholy. But I every understand. day, I am stressed yeah. because my house is messed up. Yeah. Because life has brought me this far. And ha the life's challenges has made things like that, you know, um, a bit more chaotic, a, a bit more challenging, mm. maintaining the house and things like children, mm. managing a ministry. Mm -hmm. And then somebody even coming to church on time yeah. is one of my pet peeves. Nobody would believe that it's a, it's a biggest pet peeve of mine. Wow. But you can't control. There are so many things you, you, you run into that you can't control. Yeah. One. I would say, if you're single, just unlearn some of the things. Yeah. It will take time. Yeah. And let's say, if you don't go to get to places on time, start getting organized. Yeah. Start planning. Mm. You can manage those things better when you are single. When you are with a spouse, mm. if right now you are married to the person asking the question, mm. if you are married, then you have to... It, it gets a bit complicated. Yeah. It's easier Especially said than done. if you are married to a flag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why flags keep getting such a bad name. We are, we are supposedly the best husbands there. No, are. no, no, you are the best. You, you are, are the best. best. You are the best. You are the best. Um, so, but then it takes a lot of discussions. Mm. So if you are married to a flag, like we are saying, mm. not just a flag, I'm sure there are other temperaments mm. too that make being a melancholy 
um, a bit difficult. I realize that melancholy... You are married to a sanguine. Sanguines very disorganized. Very disorganized. Mm -hmm. I was going to say mm -hmm. melancholies work very well with cholerics. Yeah. And so um, you can have a, a discussion about yeah. it. Knowledge brings power. Yeah. You, are, you are empowered through the discussions yeah. and the knowledge. And I'm, I'm sure if they follow your family life mm. series, they will add knowledge onto it. And when, not only learn, but apply what they are learning. And I would say, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but prayer. Sometimes you are at your wit's end and you, the equation is just not balancing out. You just have to add prayer because God helps us through all the difficulties that we cannot maneuver through. And so prayer makes a difference. Reverend Thomas, would you want to add to it? Yeah, so I think what, what I would add to that is it really depends on the extent to which that person, you know, if, if it's a house, yeah. maybe if it's a young person yeah. and... You know, they are living with their parents mm -hmm. and things like that. They may not have as much influence over changing that environment as if they were living by themselves or if they were in a different setting. So I think the answer also depends on how much does that person have the ability to even affect their environment. And then, even if you cannot change the broader environment, probably there are things that you can do to change maybe the room you sleep in. Or, or the way you plan your day. Yeah. You know, so you can start somewhere yeah. in terms of getting better organized. Hello, mommy. Good evening. I got into a relationship with a lady. And it's been four years now. She already has a child. I'm in Kumasi working. While she's training on a job at the moment in a different city and will sometimes visit me. Whenever she visits and I check her messages on her blind side, I always discover she's flirting with different men. Hmm. This has gone on for more than three times and she will deny or sometimes bluntly tell me, whoever spends on her training is the one she will marry. Wow. And that's how she even gets her rent. I am confused. What do I do? Hmm. Well, <laughs> mommy, I, I think the answer is obvious. I think the answer is obvious. One, one thing, I don't know if I said this the last time that we uh, were on your show, but I always try to advise people as though they were my sibling or as though they were my very close friend so that it, it helps me give the most sincere yeah. advice to people. Yeah. You know, so if this were my sister or a close friend or my brother or a close friend. Or even your son or a daughter. Or even a son or a daughter, my answer would simply be, this is not worth it. I think that she, he, needs to, he needs to leave. My mama, do you want to add to it? I, I believe we are addressing temperament, and sometimes people confuse temperament with character. Temperaments are very difficult to um, change or control or manage, but character, we all can change our character, and this seems to be a character problem you can give a lot more grace to temperament, but character is um, something that I believe that we all can do better. Even with temperament as a Christian, at some point people must not be able to tell who you really are as a, as, as a Christian. Because you've worked on your you've weaknesses. You've worked on your weakness. So my darling, um, this is a red flag. For a lady to tell you that the one who spends on her is the one she will marry. And men are even paying her rent. It's, it's enough ground. I think that you need to have a meaningful discussion with her. Because with what you are saying, you are saying that you've been in the relationship for four years. 
A four-year-old relationship means that it's a, seen, it's a serious relationship. It's moved from um, the friendship stage to the courtship stage. So if you are in the courtship stage and she's telling you that um, I move with the ones who give me money, I move with the ones who pay my fees, I move with the ones who pay my rent, then indirectly she's telling you that you are not fit for her. It means that even in marriage, when you can't provide for her, she will move out of the marriage. You need to take a quick decision. This is a red flag. And, and mommy, there's a word for that. Yeah. It's called a gold digger. A gold, a gold, gold digger. digger. Yep. So you are actually going out with a gold digger. Yep. Would only go with you when you have gold. And would <laughs> dig and dig like it's happening in Ghana now. Galamse everywhere. You live in your house. And by the time you realize they are digging under your house, <laughs> very soon houses will collapse in Ghana. So please advise yourself. Somebody says, good evening, Mama Rita. Please, my husband is a choleric. And then before I forget, the one who said um, she's a melancholy or he's a melancholy, I just hope you know your temperament. Mm. Um, some people say I'm choleric, yet they are not. I'm melancholy, yet they are not. So be sure you know your temperament. Otherwise, like I always say, um, you can send us a message. Um, let us know who you are. If you are able to describe who you are, we can tell you what your temperament is. So good evening, Mama Rita. Please, my husband is a choleric and very domineering, certainly a choleric, and melancholy as well. So maybe the melancholy is the second temperament. But I'm phlegmatic and melancholy and melancholic. Please. How do I handle him and his temperament? He's difficult to deal with in anything, which is true of cholerics. He had a problem with my dad, and now he hardly associates with him. I have tried severally to unite him with my dad but he seems not to give yes to me any time I mention things regarding my family. Please, what do I do about it? Because I have prayed. I know she knows who will say she should pray. She says, because I have prayed and prayed about him and the situation to no avail. The man is a choleric, domineering, second temperament or secondary temperament is melancholy. She is a phlegmatic, primary, secondary melancholy. Something happened between her husband and the father. And, the father. and since then, things have gone sour. I think, I think it's a very tough, um, mm. tough question. It's a very tough situation that she finds um, herself in. Um, one thing that I know about cholerics is that they tend to have an ego, yeah. a huge one. Yeah. I think that if you want to get anything done with a choleric, you have to know how to massage yeah. their ego. Yeah. Um, and once you massage the ego and you get the person maybe feeling a little bit good, um, then if there's a request that you have or something that you need done with that individual, then you add it. So I think if she has prayed, the second thing that she needs is to apply a lot of wisdom in the situation. I think yeah. that number one, she needs to know how to handle the man's ego. Yeah. 
it, it, it is very likely that if you were to speak to this man, I'm sure that one of the things that the man might say is that this woman doesn't respect me or he doesn't, she doesn't value my opinion or things like that. Most cholerics who have, most choleric husbands who have issues in marriage, the issues typically center around respect and you don't value my opinion, those kinds of things. So um, I think that my advice to her would be that make sure that you are massaging his ego, make sure that you are being respectful in your dealings with him, make sure that you value his opinion. Even if you have a better opinion, present the appearance of <laughs> valuing what the person has to say. There are times when you already know what you want to do, but you ask anyway, what do you think? You know, things like that to make the person feel, you know, a little bit good about themselves. Then you now add your request or whatever it is that you want to do. So that's what I think. Well spoken, my mama, if you want to add on. No, I think okay. He, he pretty much okay, so I think um, you heard Reverend Thomas. Cholerics, especially men, have a lot and a lot of ego. Number two, they always want to feel respected. Number three, they want to feel in charge. Number four, they want to be valued. So let him feel that you respect him. Let him feel that you honor him. Massage his ego. Let him feel important in your life. Very, very important in your life. Tell him, well, you might be right um, in, you know, what you feel about my father, what happened, blah, 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 blah. But then a father is always a father. Just like I won't do that to your father. I don't think that it is right to do it to my father. Number two, your father-in-law is your father by law, mm. is your father by covenant. Mm. You see, sometimes when we say father-in-law or mother-in-law, you see the person as a second mother or a second father. But the truth is the person becomes your father by law, by covenant. He is your father. Mm. That's good. So the way you behave towards your biological father, behave the same way towards your father-in-law. Number um, three, if you honor your father, if you honor your parents, and um, what does the Bible say about respecting our parents? You get long life. That's right. So if you want to live long, you need to respect your parents both spiritual parents, biological parents, in-laws. So I believe that if you come in this angle, number one, respect him. Number two, let him feel he's good. Number three, let him feel he's important. Number four, let him feel that his decisions are right. After you've made him feel good and big and, you know, all-knowing and everything, now you come in with the word of God. How the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, and you belong. You stay long. It will, be well with it will be well with you. Let him know that if anything should happen, and he should die today, because of his relationship with your father, and his relationship with his father by law, he will go to hell. I believe that if you come with that angle, um, you would you'd win. And don't ever get tired of praying. We can never overemphasize prayer. That's true. And prayer is not something you pray one day, a second day, a third day, and think that you have prayed enough, and that is all. Pray about the situation every time. When he's in a good mood, go pick it up. Don't do it in anger. Don't do it in disrespect. Um, let him know that he might be right, but his approach might be wrong. And then gradually, 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 with continuous prayer, you will get there and you will win. Trust me. Amen.
Amen. Amen. I am married to a typical choleric, and I have won. Yes. And I know you would also win. In Jesus' Today, name. My husband is like cutting wood. <laughs> so the same way you you your husband will also be cutting wool. The only thing is that you have to use a lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom, a lot of respect, a lot of submission, a lot of prayer. And once you do this, you give them what they need, um, which I will go into it next week. The way you treat your partner according to his or her temperament. I believe when you do it and you do it right, you will win the battle. Amen. 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 Good evening, mommy. God bless you for the lives you are touching. I've been dating this lady close to five years now. And we are planning to get married next year, God willing. I don't know how people can be courting for five years. <laughs> the problem is, when she does something wrong, she won't say sorry. And a lot of people have said to me, Mommy, you need to address this. My partner does not know how to say sorry. Instead, she would always argue her way out. For peace to reign, I will keep mute, thinking she will realize her mistake and apologize. But that never happens. When she gets angry, she talks to me anyhow. I normally sit her down when tempers are down, but she keeps doing the same all the time. I once complained to her mom, and yet she thinks the mom is supporting me. I am now afraid to go ahead with the marriage. Do you want to take this one? I should go first. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is a difficult question. It's a yeah. guy, so I would want to hear the guy's perspective. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a difficult question. Yeah. I think that, you know, a, a, a lot of it has to do with at, at some point, 